All right, so now some news on Russia. Uh, we have NATO agreeing to a new master plan to counter what they say is a growing Russian threat. And so this was agreed to by all the NATO defense ministers. And they, they say this sets up a plan uh, to... Let's see. They want to be able to attack Russia on multiple fronts uh, in the Balkans, in the Black Sea region, uh, Ukraine. Uh, let's see. Nudes, hacking and space. And so this just sounds like a massive, massive like defense, military, industrial complex, kind of uh, the, the NATO global uh, you know, kind of defense industry, uh, just a, a massive spending plan from them. And, and, you know, this is going to get the basis uh, for a lot of spending in all these individual uh, countries. But it's also a way to say, oh, my God, look how terrible Russia is. And they, you know, they talk about Russia moving troops closer to the border of NATO countries, but failed to mention that those troops are actually moving inside Russia. And in fact, the article is very dishonest. It then goes on to say, in May, Russia amassed some 10, uh, 100,000 troops on its border with Ukraine, but doesn't even mention that Ukraine is not a NATO state. So it's not even proving the point here because, you know, this isn't on the border with NATO. Now, you know, some of these troops may be moving to, say, Belarus and not actually all within the Russian border. But at the same time, you know, the, the U.S. would never portray it as like, you know, we're moving troops close to um you know, like troop movements around and inside NATO are not portrayed as aggressive actions against Russia. And that's what the U.S. does on the flip side. And so uh, there's one more thing in here that I just thought was kind of crazy right at the end. They talk about Russia potentially trying to develop a super weapon. Don't know what it is. Don't really get into details. But again, it just seems like a great excuse for a lot of military spending. Now, at the same time, we have uh, our Secretary of Defense, uh, Lloyd Austin, and traveling to NATO and then Ukraine and Georgia. And during his trips to Ukraine and Georgia, he said that the U.S. you know has an open door policy for membership. Of course, Biden recently, you know, the U.S. says that these two countries could join, but they have to be less corrupt. And my guess is that there's no real interest in the U.S. in, in really evaluating them on their corruption level. However, that the corruption level is so high, I don't think it's going to come into, you know, that that's not the real issue. That's just used like kind of as a fig leaf to say, oh, no, we can't let you in at this point. Uh, but Austin does go in and says that. And this, of course, provokes a Russian reaction, saying that this would violate a Russian red line. Ukraine has a very long border with Russia. They feel it would uh, put their put their country in a lot of danger. This would be like, you know, if the U.S. fell apart after the, the Cold War. And then it's now, you know, Russia that has expended the Warsaw Pact all the way through Western Europe, Ukraine, France, etc. And now is actually considering uh, bringing in Canada. And the U.S. is saying, you know, we, we may not be the superpower we once were, but we still have a massive nuclear ar arsenal and a pretty large military. And we don't think that you're actually willing to fight us over Canada. So if you go ahead and you overthrow the government of Canada and then you uh, put that country into the Warsaw Pact, you know, we would go to war over that. And that's the red line that Russia is drawing right here. Now, of course, the U.S. always talks about Russia and Russia and Russia and Russia and Russia and Russia. However, it's actually the U.S. We recently flew B-1 bombers over the Black Sea. Of course, you know, this is uh, pretty close to the Russian border. They scramble fighter jets to intercept. We also have our... Uh, bombers the, the b1b bombers which by the way uh you know can carry a large payload um you know that they have to scramble uh the, their fighter jets to intercept these bombers again um in the sea of japan and so imagine if this was happening to the united states we have russian bombers flying off of the coast of san francisco and then a couple of days later the coast of washington dc or new york city of course this is russia aggression right but nobody talks about the american aggression that we're constantly uh pointing towards russia now one last story on russia here that's pretty important and that is uh diplomats uh were 
um, I guess the diplomats that were between NATO and Russia. So Russia had a mission in NATO and then NATO had a mission in Moscow, I believe. Uh, what happened first was that NATO had spelled eight Russian diplomats alleging that they were spies. So Russia responded by just suspending its mission to NATO and then closing NATO's mission in Moscow. And this will be effective November 1st. This is going to take away a key line of diplomacy between the two sides here. And while, look, you know, this is the 21st century now. This is, well, 2021, really, where Zoom is the, a thing. And, and, you know, these means should occur, occur. However, these are entrenched bureaucracies. And I really think that having these mission, missions open, even if there's not a ton of face-to-face -face means, even if they're sitting in Moscow having Zoom meetings with their counterparts in the Kremlin or something like that, Still a hell of a lot better than uh, having these buildings closed, um, you know, much less the face to face means and everybody actually getting to know each other. These lines of communication are important and taking them away, uh, I, I really think harms the, the relationship and is a really big deal.